Governor Mike Huckabee, Gov, great to see you. Thanks for being with us. So listen, these, the, the new Arizona, Pennsylvania uh, polls came out today. But if you're Donald Trump, and again, we are a light years away from the election. There's a lot of time left. But if you're Donald Trump uh, right now looking at these poll numbers, you're feeling pretty good. You got to feel pretty good. And one of the reasons is people are just looking at their own finances and they understand what's going on. Uh, just this week, a new report released that the typical American family is $11,434 worse off under Joe Biden per year than they were under Donald Trump. Now, think about that. Most families, $11,000 is a lot of money. And so if you just to help understand that there are a lot of uh, folks out there that are saying, you know, OK, maybe I'm not a Republican. Maybe I don't like Donald Trump's tweets, but, but I want to take better care of my family. And when rent's up 20 percent, groceries are up over 20 percent, electricity up 28 percent, gas is up 18 percent, likely to go higher. You just look at the numbers and people, uh, they can either do one of two things. They can vote the way the media tells them to or they can vote in their best interest for greater security, secure borders, and their own economic position. And it, just really quickly, in terms of the liberal lemmings, and I call them the political pedicurists <laughs> who like to massage Joe <laughs> Biden's feet, they were dead wrong about the State of the Union, that the, the margin, the unfavorable margin for Joe Biden has widened after the State of the Union. And the Harris poll found that more than half of registered voters thought the speech did more to divide the country and that Biden's delivery of the speech raised questions and concerns concerns about his age. But, uh, Governor, I do want to move on to this. Bill Maher cooked up some crazy ideas. Just listen to his dream ticket idea for 2024. Nikki Haley, I mean, the Super Tuesday, she got, got, got out of the yeah. race. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think there's a future for her in the Republican Party now. I know it's crazy to think that she could run with Biden. But that's my dream, mm -hmm. a unity ticket. And then he would, I think, definitely win. All right, Kyle, Biden, Haley. Now, if that isn't a match made in a cesspool of hell, I don't know what it is. And uh, speaking of VP picks, listen, what, what, what do you think? Independent candidate uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. topped his list off, his short list with NFL quarterback Aaron Rodgers, along with former Minnesota Governor Jesse Ventura. That's a blast from the past. Kennedy posting on X today that he's planning on announcing his decision on March 26th in Oakland. Gov, um, listen, I, I always think VP picks are interesting. It says a lot about your vision for the country, who you want as your teammate. But do they really matter, Governor? Really, isn't it about the top of the ticket? And well, by the way, unless you're Joe Biden and you might not make it four years, and then Kamala Harris actually matters. It does matter only in the sense that they can bring a certain level of energy. They might bring a certain constituency. But people vote on the president, not the vice president. A vice president can hurt the ticket. If uh, RFK picks Aaron Rodgers, he's got a person who understands what it is to compete and to win. It might be an interesting choice. It would shake things up a little bit. Jesse Ventura, on the other hand, did not have a great record as governor. I was governor of Arkansas when he was uh, elected in Minnesota. And I remember, I think it was kind of a shock that Jesse Ventura went into that office. I don't think he understood the gravity of being a governor. And it was sort of a shock that this was a full-time 24-7 job. So I can't imagine that he would be selected, nor can I imagine that he would say yes to it. Uh, the idea of Nikki Haley joining with Joe Biden would be disastrous for both parties. Hardcore leftist Democrats aren't going to support Haley, and no Republican is going to cross over who wouldn't have crossed over anyway, because that just proves Nikki Haley wasn't really one of us anyhow. So I think that would be a total disaster if that we, happened. We wanted to ask you about this, because Sean and I were debating it. Uh, in the commercial break yesterday. House Republicans, the campaign arm, has a message for GOP candidates. Stop being shy around abortion and get your message out. In the memo obtained by the Wall Street Journal, the guidance says this, quote, tells candidates they must confidently articulate their stance and that being unwilling to stake out a clear position with voters is the worst possible solution. It goes on to say that the GOP has a branding problem, not a policy problem. 
Kellyanne Conway said yesterday, don't talk, like the voters are going to tell you what they want to hear, what their top issues are. Don't tell them. No, I disagree with that wholeheartedly. I think he, that report is exactly right. Be clear and articulate a position and don't be afraid to say I'm pro-life. This is nonsense. Most of the misunderstanding about the overturning of Roe v. Wade has happened because Republicans kept their mouths shut when they ought to be articulating the fact that abortion hasn't been banned, but it's been turned back to the states. If you're in a pro-life state, thank God you're in one. But the truth is that even France, the most liberal state country we can think of, they only allow abortion up to 14 weeks. Some states have very tight restrictions. Others have wide open abortion. You can have an abortion up to the day of birth. I think what Republicans should do is say, we believe in life. The other party believes that you should take the life of a baby at any time, anywhere, for any reason. And most Americans really can't abide that if that's their choice. It can, and it's, and it's painful, and it's gruesome, and you should talk about that. Uh, Governor Mike Huckabee, yep. a pro-life for himself, thanks for being with us on The Bottom Line. We appreciate it. Always so smart. Thank you.